Hey everybody, it's Ryan Lundquist, and I've been getting so many questions from appraiser colleagues lately about how to make a graph in a pivot table. And what I want to do is show you how to export data from MLS and, or at least get it into Excel and make graphs like this. I've been making a lot of these during the pandemic. I've been showing stuff like here's weekly listings, how, how listings are changing. Okay. Or you can look at, here's the number of daily cancels. Okay. Or here's the number of daily properties on hold, or here's weekly pending sales. And, and what th this is so cool because it's so easy to make, but look, it shows that pendings were increasing. They dipped for three weeks. There was a sharp dip. And then and look, there's been um, a more of a recovery lately over the past month. And so this helps me tell the story of value. But look, you can show pendings by the week or by the day. And I think there's value to each of these. I won't get into that right now, but um, you know, you choose whatever is going to communicate well in your market. All right. And so here's what I want to show you today, though. This is the number of weekly sales in the Sacramento region. And what I'd like to do is um, to give you tips for how to do this. I want to show you how, but I also want to give tips for how to do this with listings and pendings. I think I've been getting most questions for, well, how do we do pendings? It's a little bit more complicated, so I, I wanted to show you this to start with. Okay, And so um, the most important thing is that you find out in your MLS which data field in your MLS shows the sales or shows what you want to export. Now in my MLS, there's different, there's fields for everything. There's fields for address or square footage, bedroom count, bathroom count. And so you can export whatever you want. The only thing that I want to export here is the status date. That's what it's called. When a property is sold, the date that it's sold on is called the status date field. Okay. Or uh, cancellations, um, holds, new listings and pending contracts, they all use the same status date. And so that's what I'm going to work with when I'm, I'm looking at this information. So I've already, I, I started a search in MLS and just here's the past few weeks um, of data. I want to show you how easy, easy this is. I'm going to open up this file and I've already told MLS I've set up a custom export really easy to do it's basically saying hey i only want to see this status date okay now you can do that um in your mls i mean however you figure that out but the only thing you want you want to deal with is what is going on with the status date you can you can scroll down and see that these are sales recent sales in may and it has a status date so let me show you kind of how i would do it in my mls i've already i already have a file that's been opened and what my file has is a status date for all these properties, okay? All these closed sales, all right? Um, since January 2019, all right? Now, let me scroll down. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna push Control Shift down. That's a shortcut for getting down to the bottom. There's um, 33,358 sales, okay? Remember that number because it's important. I'm showing you this for a reason. Now, um, and one thing I also recommend uh, is to get your data in order. And, and so if it's if it's all jumbled when you first export it, I would suggest getting it, you know, in order, you know, from the first to the second to the third of January or whatever. And you do that very simply by going to data and you can sort right here, sort oldest to newest, A to Z down, continue with this current selection, boom, and that'll put it all in order. OK, that'll come in handy in just a minute. So now that I have all my data, this is so easy. Let me show you how to do it. You go to insert, you go to pivot table. OK, and then it's asking you for the data range. Now, imagine. Let me see here. Imagine. Let me, let me wipe this out. Let me show you how to get this. Um, what you want to do is you want it to tell, tell it to do all of column B. But here's the thing. If you click all of B, the, the problem is, is that there's a bunch of space below that thirty three thousand three hundred and fifty eight mark. So it's going to it's going to have this uh, weird thing that says blank space on your graph. And you don't want that. And so what I would recommend doing is to start to just grab a little bit. And let's see, I went down to field um, 20, to cell number 20. But instead of 20, I'm just going to cut that out. And I'm going to go 33358. And that'll tell me, tell it to go all the way down to my last data point. Okay. And I'm going to uh, choose where I want it. I'm just going to say the existing worksheet. That's fine. And what I'm going to do is organize the data now. And I'm going to click this, grab it, and take it down to values. And here's what this done, what this did. It it had my pivot table, um, and it basically shows me 
where when all sales occurred. So there were two on January 1st, there were 62 on January 2nd and such, and it goes all the way down um, through 2020. And so it's a pretty cool tool, okay? Now let me show you how, to, how easy this is. We go to insert and we, um, let me see, let me just make sure. Okay, go to insert. Uh, you have your mouse clicked in here somewhere. Go to insert. You could choose what different um, types of graphs you want. I want a line graph, okay? And so I'm going to click here. I'm going to make a line graph. Now, this is a very ugly graph for right now. Um, and the reason why it doesn't look so pretty like this is because this graph is by the week. And this graph right here shows by the day. And, and you have all these, you know, lines where it goes way down because remember on the weekend, there aren't going to be a lot of sales. Okay. There really shouldn't be on most times because escrow and title are closed over the weekend. And so what I want to do is I want to convert my data to the week instead of by the day. And so here's how simple it is. Click anywhere in the pivot table and then right click and go to group and then, in, then make sure it's on days. Okay, and I want to select the number of days, and I'm going to go seven. Okay, so seven days, voila, check this out. It put my graph into weekly increments. Now, here's an important thing, though, and this is why I organized my data um, by, you know, sequentially, because I don't want my graph to start on January 1st. Now, I've looked back, and the first day that I want to use, if I want to use my data from, you know, Sunday to Saturday, that's where I want my week to start. January 6th was that first day. Okay, January 1st was like in the middle of the week. I don't want to start my graph in the middle of the week and, and analyze that because the data is going to be a little, you know, funky. And so what I want to do, I want to scroll down here and find where the 6th begins because that's where I'm starting my data. Okay, then I have, you know, 217, and that's probably a Monday. I don't know. You, you guys can look it up. Um, number 217, okay. And what I'm going to do is that I'm clicking anywhere in the pivot table and I go to options and then I go to change data source. And what I want to do instead of on one, I want to just say 217 in there. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go through this process again, go down there. Okay. And then let me group it. Um, apparently it didn't keep the group group uh, days go to seven. Okay. And that looks more like what I want it to look like. All right. And so the cool part is it, and you can address this graph, you know, make, make the title, whatever you want, you know, um, you know, and you go to basically format, um, uh, you know, and you, you can, you can, or lay out and you can put, you know, the access titles and whatever you want to be on here. Okay. Now, how do you add to this graph? It's really easy, okay? Um, here's my all my, my data set. I'm gonna push Control, Shift, and go down. And basically, I would post all my new data down here. And so imagine if I posted some new data, and then I got, and then all the new data went down to 33528, okay? And so here's what I would do. If I, if I do that, oops, 33528, what I would do is I click anywhere in my pivot table, and then I'm gonna go to Options, change data source and then i would go and get the new number in there three three five two eight and so that's how i'm going to change it or imagine if you wanted to just show you know sales from 2020 well i figure out it's not field number two seven cell number 217 it's going to be you know way down here i figure out whatever that is and then I'm going to put that date in there. And then it allows me to sort of customize some of my graphs I've done. And they've only been, um, they've, you know, only been March, you know, through May 2020. And that's fine. So whatever you want to communicate. Okay, so this is it in a nutshell. In terms of listings, it gets a little bit tricky because you can export all current listings. Okay, if you're doing a graph on listings, you want all your listings right here on the date in which the property listed. In my MLS, that would be the status date. But here's the problem. There's been properties that have, if I wanted to look at all listings since January 2020, there's properties that were listed, but they're currently pending. And so you know what I have to do? I have to have an export of the pendings. And then I have to strip out that date when they were listed. And so I add those to my, you know, um, to my listings. And then I also have to look at sales and find the sales that uh, were also uh, listed after January, January and afterwards. And so when you're looking at listings and pendings, what you really have to do, you have to sort of 
you know, get from multiple sources. Okay, I've seen some colleagues who they'll look at pendings and their graph doesn't look right for all of 2020 because they're only looking at current pendings, which, you know, might just be over the past couple of months. And so you really have to strip out, you know, the sales. And if I look at uh, the sales then I have to figure out, well, what what do I need to export from that? The status date is the, the sale date. And so when I look at a sale, I have to look at a different date in my MLS and figure that out. And in my MLS, it's called, you know, the pending contract date. And so it gets tricky. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's easy to do this type of thing. It's not hard to do pendings and listings. It's just more tedious because you got to pull from, from other sources. And if we don't pull from those other sources, our, our visuals not going to be realistic. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. This is the best I can explain it as a tired guy on a Saturday, um, but go for it. If you need more graph assistance, I, I'll put a link in the bottom. Um, I have um, sacramentoappraisalblog.com slash graphs. I have about six or seven or eight different types of graphs to make. Um, I'm here for you. Uh, let's tell the story in a very visual way and up our game. Hope this helps. Uh, please email me or tweet at me or on Facebook. Show me what you're doing. I would love to see what you're creating in your market. Hey, thanks a lot, guys.